flying standby. Is it flying free, filling empty seats, getting to go anywhere you want when you want? <laughs> or is it something else? What is flying standby? How does it work? How can you do it? And what's it really like? <laughs> So one of the things I have really been blessed with the last year or so is the opportunity to be able to do something called flying standby. It basically means that if there are empty seats on an airplane, that I have the opportunity to, under certain circumstances to fill those empty seats and to be able to fly. It means that I get to fly to places and in ways that I normally wouldn't be able to and in a way that fits my extremely small budget. And of course, everybody wants to know, how does this work? How do you get this opportunity? How can I do it and fly really cheap or free? Uh, well, it's not quite that simple. So let me tell you what it's really like, how it works, how you get the opportunity to do this, and then the good and the bad, and uh, you have the downright ugly at times with doing it. So first off, how do you get the opportunity? Uh, I had somebody send me a message the other day saying, Hey, I see that you get to do this. I really want to fly to such and such a place, but so expensive. How can I do what you do? Well, there's actually a pretty simple way for you to be able to do that. Uh, get a job with an airline. Have a family member get a job with the airline. Uh, and that's pretty much how you get the opportunity. It basically comes as a perk of working for the airlines. And they extend that perk to the employee, to their immediate family, uh, and to their parents in many cases. And sometimes you can add on some friends. There are some different circumstances. We actually do have a couple family members that work for airlines. That's really how I've gotten the opportunity. I have been blessed to have a connection that has allowed me this opportunity to fly in that way. It is not something that you can just go and do. The airline is not in the habit of giving out free empty seats. Oh, look, we've got a seat here. Let's go grab somebody off the street and put them in. The it doesn't work like that. It comes as a perk of employment. And it's not free. Even though you may hear people say, yeah, we're flying free. It's really not. There's a couple different things that happen. Either you're paying a reduced fare, depending upon how you are listed, or what happens if you don't pay, the employee themselves are actually paying in that they are getting it credited to their income as a reduced fare and they're having to pay taxes on it. Uh, there are other ways too that the airlines compensate for it and make up for it, but trust me, the seats really aren't free. Somebody is paying for them somewhere along the way. If you're thinking you get a chance to fly free, <laughs> It really doesn't work that way. Unless you get a family member or you are working for an airline, it's not going to be a perk that's going to be available to just anybody out there. There are companies sometimes that will pay for a privilege of having their employees be able to fly standby. It's called a business standby and they are paying for that seat still. So that's really the one other way I am aware of. Or if you had a flight get canceled, then you get put on standby for the next flights. And again, those are tickets you've already paid for. So no, the airlines are not just giving out free seats. It doesn't work like that. It would be really cool if it did, but uh, sorry. So what is it like then? If you do get this opportunity, what happens? You basically can decide, you know what, I'd like to try to go to such and such a place on this date. You can actually go onto the airline site, you look up what flights are available, and you can actually see how many seats are open. And you can watch them as they gradually decrease. And just to give you an idea, typically the day or two before a flight goes, they sell like crazy. So you may be sitting there, you know, three or four days ahead of time. Oh, look, there's 35 seats on this plane. I'll get on. And then the day of the flight, all of a sudden there's three. <laughs> and you're kind of going, well, you may or may not get a seat. There is never a guarantee that you are going to get a seat. You can kind of set some goals. I'd like to go there. I'd hope to go there on this day and time. But there is a definite process. One, you have to apply for the seat. Just like buying a ticket, you book a ticket to stand by and fill in the spot. 
And then once you have booked that spot, then it comes down to a few things. One, that there is actually empty seats on the plane, that there are seats that haven't been uh, bought. Right now, there's a lot of demand for plane tickets. Flight crews are small. Good luck. There's not a whole lot of empty seats. There's some, but it's a very high demand, low availability time right now. So you have to have an empty seat to begin with. If there's an empty seat, that seat goes first to paid standbys, like the ones I mentioned earlier. The next option is for airline employees that are on duty that needed to get to work because some of them commute through flight to get to their jobs, whether it's pilots, flight attendants, things like that. They've got first priority to those seats. After that, there is a waiting list, and there's different ranks, different ways to get on this list, and you, you want to make sure that you're up higher on the list. And they will start giving out the empty seats to the top of that list and go down. You've got to be at the airport ahead of time, early, and then you don't find out until typically 15 minutes before the plane leaves if you're going to be on it. You may know looking at that list, oh, there's so many seats and I'm this far on the list, I'm probably going to get on it. But there have been a couple times when right as that plane was about to leave, I had one time I got the last seat and I had one time I missed it by one. It does happen, and you kind of sit there, and then you wave at the plane as it goes bye-bye. You can check luggage. It's generally not a really good idea. You want you learn to live on a carry-on because you could very easily have a time where you have checked in a suitcase. Your suitcase ends up on the plane, but you're like me, that one seat waving the plane goodbye, and your suitcase goes someplace, and you're not there. So generally not a good idea to check suitcases and lest you have uh, other means for them. It can be a gamble. It can be an adventure. It can mean a lot of changes. Uh, you don't know a lot of times if you get the seat, if you're going to go where you want to, or if you end up having to route some other way. You may get on your first flight, and then you may find when you get to the connecting airport that your flights after that are all full, and you have to wait. I've had that happen a couple times where I have flown into one airport and got ready to go and my flights later were all full and I didn't get to go home. When I took my daughter and dropped her off on her plane to Japan, I actually had the ticket to the airport with her, flew down to this main airport, put her on the plane, and then all the flights home were full. I didn't get to go home that day. I ended up having to stay the night, booked a hotel, which cost me money that I was hoping not to spend, and ended up at the airport bright and early the next day to get on that very first flight home to try to make sure that I got home. Because early flights tend to have more open seats than later flights. So yeah, there's another thing. If you really want to, you know, make sure you on a plane, you're probably going to have to be on that 5.30 a.m. flight. It stinks sometimes. <laughs> and it can be a real adventure because... You never know if your plane's going to have that spot for you or if you have to go to a different flight. I have had times where I have been at a major airport and my first hope for a flight didn't happen and had several flights going where I wanted to go. So we went on down to the next gate and the next flight and waited to see if I could get on that one and not on that one. And so then I went down to the next flight and waited to see if I was going to get on that one. Um, and then you kind of realize at a certain point that, you know, I don't think I'm going to go today. Let me just tell the gate attendant, um, hey, can you just rebook me for the first flight tomorrow morning? And I'm going to go sleep somewhere. Hopefully not on the floor of the airport. Yeah, you see those people sleeping on the floor of the airport? Sometimes they're standbys because they're waiting to try and get on that flight. <laughs> So again, sometimes you will have an idea ahead of time if you're going to get on it. Sometimes you don't. good example of the adventure aspect is when I was flying home from Israel. Now, one of the things that's really cool about flying standby is generally the best seat that's available, if you book your ticket right, you will get that. So if the best seat available is an extra legroom exit row, cool, you got an exit row. If the best seat available is first class, sweet! You got first class. That's awesome. If the best seat available is that middle seat in the last row right next to the bathroom where you're squished in, guess what? You're in the middle seat in the back row next to the bathroom like this. You take what you get when you fly standby because that's what you get. So you may not know ahead of time, but you may end up with something kind of like what I had when I came home from Israel. Our 
flight plans changed all of a sudden. We knew we had to come home early from what we had originally planned. They were closing the airports. Things were changing. We ended up coming home two days before Christmas. Uh, can you all say super busy airline time? And realizing this and knowing that there were two of us, my wife and I, it was going to be an adventure. And I had no idea how this was going to work. My wife had the opportunity to fly standby. And in retrospect, I should have flown her standby and part of it. But we ended up playing the safe route. We took our checked baggage and we sent it with her and bought her a ticket. Actually on a different airline than I flew home with because it was cheaper. Gave her a guaranteed seat all the way home. We knew she was going to make it home two days before Christmas. Me, on the other hand, well, hey, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to save the money, pay a reduced fare because international flights are expensive. Knew that the flight out of Israel would be pretty empty. So, okay, I can get to the States. This is the part I should have had my wife fly standby with me. If you saw my video coming home from Israel, yeah, I got the cushy first class seat. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. It was nuts. I've never done anything like that before. I hope I get to do it again. Got to JFK Airport. All right, I'm ready to go. Now the adventure begins because it's two days before Christmas. I have no idea if I'm going to get out of JFK or not. Our plane actually landed before customs was open, and I managed to breeze through customs in like 20 minutes, which is absolutely insanely fast. Got out to the airport. My flight that I was scheduled on wasn't leaving for a couple hours, but there was another flight going in 25 minutes or so, 30 minutes from when I got there. So I ran over to that gate, walked up to the gate attendant and went, I'm on this later flight. I may or may not get on that flight because I'm a non-revenue standby. And what I'm hoping is maybe you can bump me up and get me on this one so I can get to that other airport and maybe actually get home. She looked wonderful lady. One of the things you learn when you fly standby, treat all the airline employees nice. Do it anyways. Hey, bring the flight attendants chocolates. They're going to love you. Just a hint. Talked up real nice, small talk and everything else. She got me a seat on that plane. Um, there was actually like one, maybe two other seats after me on the plane. We took off and just for fun, I decided to pull up the flight list on that next flight I would have been on, and it ended up, as I was in the air, overbooking. I wouldn't have gotten on that next flight, which meant I would have been stuck in JFK because all the flights after that were all overbooked as well. Um, I got to my next airport, which then had the direct flight to Springfield, and again, it was kind of waiting, kind of hoping, um, and it's an airport that actually, typically, its flights to Springfield are full. There's rarely empty seats on it. And somehow that day, I managed to catch an empty one. And again, it was waiting to the end. And again, I think there was only like one, maybe two people after me that got on the plane. And I managed to get home on that day when I very much expected to be stuck in New York City and sleeping at the airport while I was waiting to try to catch planes that could connect me to an airport that could then connect me home. I had no idea how that was going to work. You play the connections and you have to be flexible because it changes. When I went to the Mall of America, the day I was going to come home, every flight was full. Ended up getting stuck for an extra day. I was going to actually, the day I'm recording this, I was going to be in Texas, Six Flags Over Texas. Had to cancel it the day before because the flights all filled up. I keep wanting to get to Carowinds. There's direct flights to Charlotte from my airport. I can't get there because those flights are constantly full. So I really want to go, but if there's not an empty seat, it doesn't work. I can't get there. So it definitely has its drawbacks in that regard. Uh, it means sometimes going from gate to gate, flight to flight, hoping you're going to get on. It means sometimes that you're sitting there at the airport and you're realizing that your flight plan isn't going to work. And so you're constantly trying to juggle on your phone or your computer. How is this going to work? Can I change this? How can I get to, over to there? It means sometimes talking with the gate agents and saying, can you help me out? What do you see available that I'm not seeing? Um, I had one flight back home where I actually ended up with uh, two ladies in the same aisle as me, one in my row and one across the aisle, and uh, both real tired, and I started talking a little bit. They were flying standby, had just come back internationally, and had actually had to sleep at the airport the night before because there was no seats back home. 
and they were grateful to get on this plane so they could finally get back home after sleeping on the airport floor. Other things, when you're going to plan a big trip, and especially if you get one locked in a little bit, you have to be flexible. When I was going to Southern California, I knew what day I wanted to arrive. I knew when we were going to the parks and our hotel was booked and wanting to visit family. And as I'm watching the airline portal beforehand, I'm watching all of these flights to Southern California fill up, fill up drastically. And I actually, my family will tell you, I was starting to think, oh no, the way these are all full for days, I'm not going to get to go on this trip because I can't get there. Unless I buy a ticket, and I don't have money to buy the ticket. What am I going to do? And as I'm watching this, I realize two days before I'm actually planning on going, that there is one flight out that same night to Dallas. I can get to Dallas, and then there's a flight early in the morning to the L.A. area that has a big block of seats open. Nothing else has seats. And so, I mean, literally, okay, I have to be on a plane in two and a half hours. Packing my stuff, throwing it together, getting it all ready, driving to the airport after booking myself on the flight, getting to the airport, getting down there, staying overnight at a hotel I booked. Um, and then it was really funny because that flight in the morning that took me to an L.A. area airport, not the airport I wanted to get into, but it was the L.A. area. It actually had like 35 people all flying standby on it because it had that big block of uh, seats. And the gate attendant's going, why so many people? Because like, it's the only flight with seats for five days. And it was. There were no other seats going to the L.A. area. After I got to L.A., I then had to take a train all the way across L.A., closer to the uh, airport that my son was landing in. And then we had to take another train up to where my family was. Uh, it was a crazy, crazy trip. But I got there, and you have to learn to be flexible. It can be awesome. It allows you the opportunity to fly. Sometimes, uh, if you're good at booking and have a little bit of luck or blessing, you can get these amazing seats and fly in ways you never would get to fly before. But at the same time, it definitely comes with a big gamble, a big roll of the dice. Are you going to get there? Are you going to get on the plane? Are you going to get on the next plane? Are you going to get stuck? How's it all going to work out? And you sometimes don't know until you're in the process. So you got to learn to be flexible, to go with the flow, and uh, hope be willing to get stuck sometimes. So that's kind of what it's like to fly standby. Have you done it? I would love to hear your stories. I have a few others I could tell, actually, because the first time I ever got to fly standby was on my first Cedar Point trip. One of the guys was a pilot for Continental Airlines and booked me standby under his tickets. And uh, the first time I tried, I actually stood at the door of the plane while they closed it because it was full and had to walk back. And then flew the next day because they had a seat. Yep. <laughs> so it's tricky. I'd love to hear your stories about flying standby, though. And hey, if you couldn't, you could go anywhere in the world. Where would you go? I'd love to hear that, too. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share the video, too. There's probably other people out there wondering, well, how do these guys do it? Share the video out there. People will want to know. Thank you so much, too, for subscribing. We're on our way to 30,000 subs with giveaways and all sorts of stuff when we hit it. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much to my financial supporters, my patrons, and to the ones who make the flights and standby possible. I am deeply grateful. If you want to know more about that and supporting, check the description below. There's all sorts of perks and other stuff that comes with it too. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. God bless. It means that I get to fly on a regular basis and gets... Yeah. <laughs>